It's break time on my old Salem here. Uh, it's 2014. For some reason, uh, the brakes are gone on it. So it's time to put brakes on this thing. I don't really understand why they're worn out already. Uh, this camper really doesn't have that many miles on it. It uh, spent most of its life sitting in a campground storage lot. But anyway, the brakes are making a terrible noise. So uh, I'm gonna put new brakes on it today. And thought I'd do a quick video showing what's involved. Uh, there's my new brakes. I've got four new assemblies. Uh, my intent was just to replace uh, brake shoes, but apparently on camper brakes, it's very difficult to find the correct shoes. Uh, they want you to buy the entire assembly, which, I mean, it's a little more expensive, but to be honest, the, the magnet assembly is also a wear item in addition to the shoes, so it's not a bad idea. Uh, you can find these for not too awful much money. So it's not a terrible idea to replace everything. It's just four bolts, takes the whole thing off. So it shouldn't be too bad. One word of caution. I looked up my camper on the websites and all the websites told me what axles my camper had and therefore what brakes it, uh, it has. Uh, this camper does not have the axles under it that all the websites says that it has. So I crawled underneath and actually looked at the sticker on my axles to see what was actually under my camper. Found out that uh, the websites were wrong, so I ordered my brakes uh, according to what axle I actually had. Uh, I bought these off of Amazon. It was the best price I could find on them. I don't remember how much they were, but anyway, use your best judgment on that. I've already got this one wheel off the ground, I'm just using a floor jack. You can use a bottle jack or whatever jack you've got. Just make sure it's safe, that it's uh, under the actual tube really well. Uh, a jack stand will not be a terrible idea. So of course, the first thing to do is take the wheel off. I'm using a fancy plastic tool here just because I don't like to scratch paint. I'm hopefully, hopefully this will take it off instead of having to use a screwdriver. And these are 13 sixteenths. I'm using an impact wrench. Uh, you can use a four-way lugger wrench or whatever you got. I've not messed with these bearing buddies before, but looks like it may come off just like a normal dust cap, so we'll find out here. Let's get a screwdriver behind the flange here and see if they'll pop out. Yep, they do. Use a rag and wipe some of this excess grease out of the way so I can see what's going on here. Okay, very typical. Go ahead and check the bearings and see what they feel like before I take all of this hub assembly apart. They feel good and they sound good. So, no apparent bearing issues. So, the first thing to do is take these, uh, this color key out of the way and get this nut off the outside here. It's odd. Never seen a cutter key that was uh, offset. It's not through the center of the stub. Still works. The idea is you just want to get it as straight as you can so it'll push back through the hole. And there's the key. And then the 
this nut will just unscrew. Generally, they're uh, not much more than finger tight. This one actually was finger tight. Not a bad idea to get you a rag or a piece of cardboard or something to lay all your stuff out. Pay attention to what order it comes off. So there's a nut, then a key to washer, then the hover bearing. And once you get your hands clean again, all exo grease, you should just pour right off. Kind of hung up in the brakes a little bit. Almost feels like I may need to uh, get in there and try to back the brakes off a little. Like the self adjuster. Got it too tight. Brake shoes actually look pretty good, but they're making a heck of a racket. I have not adjusted the brakes on this thing. Uh, uh, it feels like it's got a uh, self adjuster, just like most drill brakes. And these brakes are actually in good shape. There's nothing wrong with these. Drum's still good, the shoes are good. So uh, I'm not going to change this set. But I'll go around and check all four of them, make sure they're all good. Sometimes drum brakes can get really noisy just on the dust buildup, so just blowing the, the dust out of them can help considerably. Still a good time to check the uh, bearings and make sure everything's in good shape. On the bearings, you just want to make sure that they turn free and even. There's uh, absolutely no grit or any kind of a weird feeling to them at all. Uh, you want to look on them and see if there's any kind of sign of rust or pitting of any kind. If you find absolutely anything at all with your bearings, replace them. Since these have bearing buddies on them, normally I would repack these bearings and then put it back together. Since these have bearing buddies on them, uh, I'm just going to squirt them full of grease after I get it reassembled. So basically just put the drum back on. Put your outer bearing back in. And move everything around so it kind of seats a little bit. You have a key washer. I'll wipe the grease off of it so I can see more about it. I'm sorry, this is not keyed. A lot of times there will be a keyway on this on the stub shaft and there'll be a little tab sticking inside the washer. This is just a normal washer. So there's no keyway to, to align. Then the castle nut. Again, I like to I'm kind of a clean freak. I like to clean things as I go. Then put the castle nut back on it and pay attention to where the uh, hole is for the cotter pin, for the cotter key, cotter pin, whatever you call it. And basically, you want to tighten that nut down, good and snug, make sure it's seated, and then back it off. A lot of times this nut is too big for a uh, crescent wrench or anything. Just a set of channel locks will do the trick. Okay, so I've got it down uh, good and snug, make sure everything's seated, and then I'm going to back it off to where the, the drum spins freely. It may take a couple of flats to make that happen. Ooh, the brakes on this one were uh, awfully tight. Looks like I'm going to have to uh, back them off a little bit. There's a slot in the back side that you can get to to adjust the brakes. But it's intended to adjust them tighter and not to loosen the brakes. So again, the back off sometimes can be a, a chore. Careful that outer 
bearing. Don't want to drop it on the ground. I do just drum brakes. There's a little star wheel underneath. Let's see if I can get you a view here. This little star wheel here is on a threaded uh, stub here, and uh, turning that star wheel is what makes the brake shoes tighter and looser. So we've got to get in there and turn that little star wheel. Okay, it's difficult to see, but there is, what well, actually it's the star wheel, is this little lever here. That little lever is a self adjuster, and it will push down on the back side of that star wheel, and you can turn it this direction in order to uh, adjust the, the brake shoes outward. So in order to turn, uh, get the brake shoes to come back in and loosen up, you gotta push in on that little lever so that it does not contact the uh, wheel. There it is. And then turn the wheel the opposite direction so that it brings the shoes back in. And then you have to you know, kind of slap on the outside of the shoes and they'll adjust back in a little bit. So I turn the wheel a couple of turns and the drum goes on very easy now. see how loose the drum fits now. We'll have to go back in after we get it fully assembled and uh, readjust the brake. So that one, I, I got it good and tight and backed it off about one flat to where the hole lines up for the pin, a little cotter key. Do yourself a favor and either replace that key or take your time and uh, straighten, the, straighten this one out as best you can. It'll go in a lot easier. Two pairs of pliers is really what you need to straighten it back out. Okay, I've got the pin pretty straight now using two pairs of pliers and it should go back down through the hole pretty easily. If the hole's lined up, I'm just bend the bottom side so it can't come back out. And put your bearing cap back on. Put it in straight, it'll go pretty easy. If you get cockeyed, it doesn't want to go. Okay, back on. So now I've got to adjust this brake and then move on to the other three wheels and see what they look like. Okay, I'm under the back side of the, of the brake now, uh, this being the bottom. Uh, there's these two slots in the bottom. They've got these little rubber plugs in them. Uh, take a screwdriver and pop those little rubber plugs out. Uh, it's got two plugs because this is a universal uh, backing plate. It can go on either left or right side of the trailer. Uh, so the star wheel is what we're trying to access on the inside of there. Uh, on this side, it's actually behind this slot, not behind this one that I took the other plug out. Uh, these are a little bit snug because they've never been out before. This trailer is, what, eight years old. So try to get you a flat screwdriver in there behind those plugs and you can get them to pop out. And there it is. 
Okay, the idea is to take a, the, a flat screwdriver in here at that star wheel, if you can find it. It's difficult to see back up in there. I'm gonna have to move my phone so I can see. But the idea is you take your, the screwdriver on that star wheel and you're getting it and you're making adjustments on that star wheel, trying to get it to, uh, I think my hand's in the way. So you're getting under the star wheel and then moving the screwdriver in order to roll it, rotate that star wheel so that you can uh, adjust the brakes outward. And what you're looking for is to adjust them to where uh, you just barely feel a little bit of a drag on the drum as you turn it. And uh, that's how you adjust the brakes. There it is. I think I'm on the star wheel, but I'm going to have to move my phone and look to see. You may have to use a flashlight, too, to look up in there. Okay, I finally got a smaller screwdriver. And uh, trying to get the direction on that little star wheel is uh, difficult. But when you actually get it, you can uh, hear it click. And now I've got a little bit of slot drag on my drum as I turn it. So that's about right. So stick your plugs back in, keep the weather out, and move on to the next wheel. These are some plastic plugs. Most of the ones that I uh, deal with in a car are rubber, very pliable. These are not very pliable. Makes them more difficult to get out and back in. Right there. Okay, on to the next wheel. Okay, I'll check all my wheels. Three of them are just fine. Get down to my last wheel, and I finally found my problem. One of the brake shoes had disintegrated, just fell apart. So this is the stuff that was uh, rolling around in there, making a bunch of racket. Been doing it for a little while, actually. Uh, so I guess we do get to change one of the brakes. You can see here the brake shoe fell apart. Here's the material that came off of it. I'm not sure exactly what this sleeve thing is. Can I do The adjuster and the bottom has disintegrated as well. So we do get to change one of them after all. What holds the uh, brake assembly on the entire backing plate and everything are these four studs. So there's four nuts on the backside that you break loose and the whole thing will come off as an assembly. So there's a nut and a washer, four of them on the back. Uh, these were 11 sixteenths. Uh, socket and a ratchet is what I used to break them loose. And there's also two wires that we'll have to deal with. Okay. And the whole assembly comes off of one. These wires, uh, these look like some sort of a factory uh, crimp. wonder if those come apart and are reusable. If not, we'll just wire in new ones with new connectors. These almost look like maybe they pop up and come apart. They're uh, uh, in line type of a deal. Yeah, don't look like they come apart very easily. So we'll just cut, this, cut the wires and uh, splice in the ones. Uh, these two green wires, you can see they're both green. Uh, which one goes to which side doesn't make any difference. They're both the same. So you snip these wires, leave yourself enough room to uh, get a splice connector on there. Uh, since these are junk, I'm going to cut them up here fairly close. Give myself some pretty good length. There's the old one. What I like to use are uh, heat shrink crimp connectors, butt, butt connectors. So I'll show you how that works. I'm just going to strip your wires.
these are my butt connectors I like to use. And they do take a special crimp plier. So you crimp them in place, and you put a heat gun or a lighter on here, and uh, it'll heat shrink and make a nice weather tight connection. I used to solder and heat shrink everything, and uh, they actually don't recommend doing that now. Uh, just automotive in general, they claim these uh, butt connectors are actually better. Uh, they claim even aviation does not uh, allow solder and heat shrink. They require butt connectors, crimp connectors instead. Apparently vibration, that kind of thing, can be an issue with solder. I don't know if it weakens the connection or what. Okay, your new brake assemblies. There are right sides and left sides. There is a difference, so make sure pay attention to what you get and which side you install. And then compare it to the other one. Make sure that it looks the same. The way you can tell, there's a long shoe and a short shoe. It looks like the long shoe goes to the rear, so pay attention. It's hard for me to match it up to, my, to mine because my old one uh, is broken now. Looking at my wires there, the way they're kind of crimped around here, making sure that they uh, didn't interfere with anything. But you can see how they install. There's just four studs and then your two wires. I'm going to go ahead and uh, strip those wires a little bit further so I can get them in my crimp connectors while it's easy access. Your magnets on the bottom, your studs in the holes, and it even comes with new hardware. Actually, it does come with new butt connectors for your uh, wiring. Oh well. The lock washer and a nut on each one. And then tighten them down. Okay, I'm all bolted up now. Playing with these new connectors. Looks like how they work. This blue part, it's actually got dielectric grease and stuff in it. Uh, so when you, you stick your wires in there, and then when you squeeze down the set of pliers, it, uh, contacts all those wires and creates a good weatherproof connection. So seeing how the new ones work, you should be able to get the old ones apart and do this the correct way. Of course they're all dirty and crusty so it's hard to tell on the old ones sometimes. If I can get that blue plate to come up, actually you could probably just snip these two wires Actually, that's probably just as easily, <laughs> just as easy. All it does is completes the circuit and it connects all three wires. So you don't necessarily have to get that apart. You can just cut it off. I'm just gonna cut them off as close as I can. Of course, I've got my new wires from the back of the brake. I'm going to snap that back off so it'll stick in there as far as we're supposed to. Okay, so new connector. You just make sure all the wires are stuck in as far all the way. And then one of the wires off the new brake. Make sure all three wires are bottomed out. And then you squeeze down on it. And that will create the connection. Or 
short hold all three wires all of them are short in the proper location One of the wires wants to stick out. I don't know what you do. Okay, then get our pliers on it and squeeze. my method better. New technology is not always the best. Let's see if I can get that to open back up because the one that fell out is the one that's already pushed down the furthest. Not a good way to get down in there to push that back up. Of course not. <laughs> what a pain in the rear. I guess we've got one more try, then we'll do the other wires my way. One. Two. Three. on that as evenly as I can. Okay, that one was a success. You see the stuff oozed out. All three wires are secure, so that one's a success. The other one, since I've messed up one of the connectors, I think I'm just going to use the butt connector like I planned in the first place instead of using these silly things. Strip my wire again. Sticking this out of my butt connector. And squeeze. I do wish I gave you a little more wire to work with. Okay. Put the heat gun on to shrink with the tubing and to be honest I think it's a more weatherproof connection than what they want you to do. You can use a big lighter in order to do the heat shrink. Uh, heat gun takes longer, but it's actually it's kind of the correct way of doing it. Okay, so that break is done. Put the drum back on it. Check for clearance. Uh, there actually is no damage inside this drum, even though I had that uh, stuff rolling around inside of it. it. Looks like I will have to adjust the. Uh, Star wheel at the bottom. I'm going to see where it's at for future reference. Okay, it's kind of 
the bottom. Actually, you can adjust them right here and right now. It's a little bit easier because you can see what you're pulling. So the star wheel pushes down for self gesture. So if you get it to roll this direction, then uh, this one will adjust and tighten up. Just go a few clicks at a time and check it down. I'm just checking to see how the drum fits. You hear it click past that lever. Just another couple clicks will be there. And you're trying to get it to where the drum just kind of barely starts to drag. Okay, that feels pretty decent in the ballpark. Put her bearing back in. Put the washer back on. And put the nut on. This is a messy job because of all the axle grease that has to be done. This just goes to show you, if something don't feel right, don't sound right, it pays to go ahead and check it. The first three wheels I checked, there's nothing wrong with them. I just blew the dust out of them. But it finally did find a problem on the, the fourth wheel. So lucky I did not stop before I got to the last one. I wanted to come in and check them on. Just like before, tighten it down, back it off. About one flat to wherever the, the hole lines up. It's still a little bit draggy, so I go one more flat. That's better. That's about right. What I was doing there is make sure there's not too much room in the bearings. You don't want it to be loose. You get straight out of my cotter key, and you're ready to slap it back together. pretty flat. You get flat, they'll slide right in. Put my wheel back on and uh, put some grease in the bearing buddies. This job's done. Problem solved.